Hello, this is Chris Huxley again. I have some more exciting news from the TwoFi development team. This year you'll see the release of TwoFi AD with compatibility to TwoFi HPC and the GPU module. Our testing of this feature to date has been really encouraging. Uh, not only is the TwoFi HPC explicit finite volume scheme really well suited to it due to it being 100% mass conserving, the speed is, is exceptional. Uh, Using GPU means that long-term environmental simulations that previously took days using Tufo Classic are now possible in hours using HPC and GPU. Before going through and showing you all some case study examples, I didn't want to first assume that everyone knew what AD was. So let's define what advection and what dispersion is. Rather than making up these myself, I've, I've gone and ripped this straight from the web. Let's see, uh, so advection is the transfer of a substance or quantity by bulk motion. Dispersion is the action of a substance spreading or diffusing within another substance. And this is roughly demonstrated by the arrow to the right for advection and then the arrow in four directions for dispersion uh, with the strongest forcing in the streamwise direction as opposed to the transverse direction or up and down in this instance. The Animation here actually demonstrates this really well. This is just a hypothetical flume. Uh, you can see here as the plug of contaminant moves down through the flume, uh, it's advected, so it's shifting, it's also dispersing at the same time. Okay, having described what advection dispersion is, now I'll go and take you through three uh, example applications. This first example is quite possibly the most obvious use of AD, where we've upgraded an existing flood model by applying a outfall to the river. We specified the location, assigned a volume outflow, and then also a trace a concentration at that location. And by running the model, we can then see how uh, that pollutant dis advects and disperses throughout the system. This is an interesting example. Here, a tracer has been applied to the smaller tributary in the model, and the concentration of that tracer in the floodplain downstream has been monitored uh, to see when the flooding was dominated by tributary flood, or flooding sort originating from the tributary, or alternatively, flooding originating from the main river. The graphs on the left show this. You can see the concentration graph on the top. Uh, where the particular location we're inspecting here starts out as dry, the concentration goes up to 100, basically representing that the inundation was due to the tributary out of bank flow, and then around 30 or 31 hours, uh, the concentration drops right down to zero, demonstrating that the river inundation has then occurred in the floodplain in this site. The hydrograph corresponding to the same location is shown below it. So you can see there's a smaller peak for the tributary and then a large peak when the river flooding kicks in. Let's look at the animation. You can see the red showing the uh, water coming from the tributary. Blue is water originating from the river. The riverbank breaks and then the floodplain fills up with the river water. This model here is a great example of a residence time assessment. The model's been established by defining an initial condition over the coastal lake system. And that initial condition uh, defined, has been defined by setting the tracer concentration to 100. After that, the tributaries and also the ocean boundary has been defined as a dynamic boundary condition without any tracer applied, so a value of zero. The models then just run for an extended period of time to see how long it takes to flush the, uh, the coastal lake. That concludes today's quick presentation. As always, if you have any questions, feedback or comments, please feel free to email me at chrishuxley at twofly.com. Thanks a lot.